All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, if you're in the right place, we are Pear Deck 101 for Google Slides. My name is Mike Mohammed. We're going to, and I'm a science teacher from Wisconsin. I live just north of Milwaukee and I teach just west of Milwaukee in Brookfield, Wisconsin. We're going to do a couple of things today. I want to show you what Pear Deck is and how it works just for if you've never seen it before. And then the next thing we're going to do is dive into, once we've shown you what Pear Deck is, I want to dive in and show you how you can make your own Pear Deck lessons in Google Slides. So what we're going to basically have you do is I'm going to want you to access a specific link. If you look at this title slide, it's Pear Deck 101. We have a bit.ly here, and I'm not necessarily going to go through all these slides in this slideshow, but I wanted to make sure you have all these resources. So feel free to make a copy of this slideshow, share it out, use it for district PD, whatever you need, cut it, take it, take it, make it your own. So there's a link here to the premium trial for Pear Deck. We're going to be talking about Pear Deck. There is a free version and a premium version, but I want to make sure you have a chance to explore the full features of Pear Deck. So this bit.ly will be in the bottom corner of our slide so you can see that and access that anytime you want to. So bit.ly Pear Fair 101. So we are here to talk about Pear Deck for Google Slides. Pear Deck has a bunch of different features, but the specific one we're looking at today is Pear Deck for Google Slides. So what is it? We present a lot of time in Google Slides, but this gives us an opportunity to turn it into an active learning opportunity and provide feedback or receive feedback from students. There are three different Pear Deck views we're gonna look at before we launch into how you can actually build your Pear Deck lessons. There's a classroom view in which the teacher presents this view for all participants to see during a session. It could be on a projector, or when we're doing this remote learning type teaching, it could be in a screen sharing window like a Zoom or a Google Meet. There's a student view. When the students log in or join a session, they have their own view that they are seeing. And then there's something called the teacher dashboard. It's almost like a behind the scenes type feature. We'll look at that as well. So let's jump into this Pear Deck session and look at some of these different views. So when we look at the classroom view, this is a question, just basically a Google slide that I made, and I would project it on the screen. So this is what I'd project on a screen or share as a classroom view. But what a student would see, if I'm a student, this is what I'm seeing. I see create an emoji to express how I'm feeling right now. So I see a slide up here, but I have all these different tools down here. This is something called a drawing slide. So I'm gonna basically look at some of these tools. So if I wanted to, I have different colors. I have a pencil, highlighter, a line tool. We'll talk about this text feature a little bit later and an eraser. So if I wanted to do a quick drawing of how I'm feeling right now, I'm presenting. So I am excited, but also maybe just a little bit nervous. So I'm drawing here. Now, as a student, I don't see what everyone else is doing. This is my personal view on my personal device. The classroom view, I don't see anything yet, but if you look down here at the bottom, I see that I have three of my seven students have responded. So I have seven students in this session right now who have joined. And I'm just gonna ask people, if you're out in the world, just follow along with this. And later, if you, in the slides, I'll show you a way where you can access these and just play around with them at your own pace. But if I wanna see where we are at here, I'm gonna click show responses. So this is the classroom view and I can share with the whole class what people have done, what students have done. All right, so we have a couple of different representations here. So this allows me to take what students are doing and share it with the whole class. Now realize there's no students' names here at all. And we have some live drawing going on. So we actually see a live view of what students are doing. Now up at the upper left, I have some extra controls on this classroom view. I have a list layout, which is what we're looking at now, a grid layout. So if I wanna see more than just one student at a time, I can do a grid layout where I can see a whole bunch of responses at the same time. So if I'm projecting this to the class, I can get a good sense 
of where we are at as a class. This last one here, it's gonna be a little bit of abstract art, something called overlay view. In a drawing slide, what this is gonna do, it's gonna slap all these on top of each other. And you can see we have a little bit of um, Jackson Pollock going on here. But let's go back to that list layout. So this is a drawing slide. Now I'm gonna to go to our next slide in the presentation, or these, I should say, these interactive Pear Deck slides. So if you are in this bit.ly Pear Deck 101, you do not, you're, known, you're not following along with us right now in that slide deck. We're just looking at these ones right here. So let's go to the next slide. What length, what is the length of this worm in centimeters? So this is just a Google slide that I made up. I typed in there, put a couple of images in there. And down here, it says students enter a number. So this is the classroom view right here. Let's go to the student view. As a student, I have a place to put in a number. So if I'm looking at centimeters here, um, let's say it looks maybe about 5.4, if I think that's how many centimeters it is. Now I'm gonna show you the third view, the teacher desktop. So let's look at the classroom view for a second. If I show our responses here, this is the overlay view, and I can kind of see where we are in terms of a class. I can also see if I click the grid layout, what individual students have put in. Now, I'm gonna show you the third view now, the teacher dashboard. So this is the classroom view. This is something I could project on the screen. The teacher dashboard, I would never wanna project on a screen. And the reason why I would never wanna project this to this classroom is because I can see what individual students responded to each one of these. Now, the teacher dashboard has a couple of great features. I can see the slides that are coming up and the slides that I've done so far. So think about this is something you could put if you have a second monitor or if you have a mobile device or a tablet, I can easily bring this up on there and see where we're going and actually move around my classroom. Now, got some good answers here, but um, I'm gonna do something here. Now, if I want to project some responses, what I can do is, I can star the ones that I just wanna show. So remember, this is in the background. Maybe there's, I wanna showcase all the 5.5s. If I go to back to my presentation view, my classroom view, I'm just showing the 5.5s. So before, I have extra responses. So if there's a student response that I don't wanna showcase, I don't have to start. Or another thing I can do, let me clear these stars right here. That'll show us, if I go to the presentation or the classroom view, it'll show us all the responses. There's a two there. Let's say I didn't wanna show that one. I'm on the teacher dashboard now. I can hide that response and it actually won't show up here. Now, one thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to the teacher dashboard. Now there's a newer feature and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this because I'm in the session too. I left, I'm gonna leave something called feedback. So there's this little bubble here, so 5.4. Now, let's say we are in a high school level science class and we're studying significant figures. And I wanna leave a comment for Michael Mohammed. And that just happens to be me, but I'm gonna leave a comment here. I'm gonna say, please use all significant figures. So. When we're doing measuring, what's important is that we use our last thing to actually estimate a significant figure. So technically, if I was in a higher level science classroom, I would actually want to go to two decimal places here. So I'm gonna send that feedback and let's go. So this is on the teacher dashboard. I'm gonna go back to my classroom view. And this is my student view. And you'll see, ooh, hey, just wait, I have new feedback. My teacher actually just communicated to me right now. He says, oh, please use all significant figures. Okay, so that means I should probably include one more decimal place. So I'm gonna call it 5.49. All right, so I adjusted that and we'll see Mike Mohammed. Okay, he changed it. Good, good, good. Let me leave in some feedback, add more feedback. So this add feedback is a new feature that I can actually communicate to students in real time. This is on the teacher dashboard and this is on the student side. So I have new feedback. Oh, 
Nice work. Okay, good, good, good. So we just saw an example of how you can provide feedback in real time to your students. So this is the classroom view again. I'm going to hide the responses. And let's go to a new slide here. This is something called a draggable slide. And this is just a little fun one I put together. Drag to select one from each column and create your blockbuster movie pitch. So it takes this slide and adds a series of different draggables on there. So you could drag them and basically make, let's say you're doing something creative, but this could be any type of thing. You could drag it on somewhere like a map, somewhere like a diagram where you want to have students point out something. A little bit later, we'll look at some of the different templates that Pear Deck has for this that are free to use. So let's go back to, so this is the student view again. Let's go back to the classroom view and let's project our responses. So you can see I have six out of 13 responses. Now on the teacher dashboard side, so I'm looking, oh, I only have six of 13 students responded. Let me go to the teacher dashboard here. If I go to the overlay view here, you'll see I have a whole bunch of students who responded, but if I scroll down here, I can specifically see which of my students have not responded. The reason I see names there is they log in with their Google accounts. We're using the Google slide, so they log in with their Google accounts. Now, one other thing here. If you put speaker notes in your Google slide deck, if you click on the notes here, your speaker notes will come up here. So imagine you're walking around the room on a tablet or an iPad or even a smartphone. You could bring up those notes walking around the room and talking to your students, seeing who needs some help, who needs some assistance. Another thing I can do, if I put my cursor over any one of these, I can see specifically who responded in a specific way. So that helps me too. And I can also do the other layout views here where I can see specifically where each student responded. All right, next slide. So this was a draggable. So we looked at a drawing slide. We looked at a draggable slide. We looked at a number slide. I'm gonna look at one more drawing slide just because there's another feature I wanted to show you. And that is audio recording for Pear Deck. So if I go to my student view, you'll see it says audio included. Now, if you look down here in the right hand corner, there's a little set of headphones. And we won't be able to hear this, but if I clicked on this icon, you'll see that there is audio that is waiting to be played. This could be additional hints you want to give to students, or maybe some pointers, or maybe even um, referring them to something else. So, or even if you want to read the slide out verbally and provide more explanation, that'd be great too. So students can access this audio. And again, I'll show you how to record it when we look at how to create these sessions. So that is another feature I wanted to show you. And this is a drawing slide. We won't look at how the students responded here. The next one I want to show you, this is another drawing slide. But I want to use, show you the text tool to name the following fruits in Spanish. So from the student end, this is a drawing slide. But if you had a touch screen, it may be easy to actually write in there. But if you're a student who doesn't have a touch screen device, it might be a little bit tricky to actually draw in there and do some writing of text. So if you click the text button down here, if I click up here, I can actually type in there. Um, and so on. A couple of things I could do with this text box, I could drag it along. To make it bigger, I go to the sizer here. I can make this text bigger or smaller. I can change the color if I want. So this drawing slide is probably the most powerful one in the Pear Deck arsenal because it allows you to do text, allows students to highlight things, draw lines. And again, we can clear this whole thing out if I hit the trash or I can undo what I just did. So let's look at the teacher dashboard. So again, this is the student view where students interact. If I look at the dashboard here, look at a grade layout and how we're responding here. And if I wanna star, let's say, let me look at these in the list view just so we can see them a little bit better. Looks like Reese is doing a good job. I wanna highlight her response because she's got some good answers there. 
So I start her response. So let's go, again, this is the dashboard view. I'm gonna go to the classroom view where I wanna present Arisa's response specifically. And realize her name isn't there, but I can showcase what she created without her having to actually mention or raise her hand and say, I know the answer. I can showcase her voice this way and give her that little bit of celebration that may, she may not be getting, someone who may not always raise their hand. All right, let's go to the next slide here. So this slide here is a multiple choice slide where students have a couple of different options. And I want them to actually choose an option. So Frank and Angie are going to do their homework at school. It's gonna take them two hours. Now what I'm gonna do, I can lock students' screens if I wanna stop them from responding. But one other thing I can do, if I hold this down, I can bring up a timer. And I'm just gonna put up a 30 second timer while I show you one thing. Now on this end, in the bottom right hand corner, there's this little icon here. And this icon is something called the immersive reader. If I click on here, it's gonna take me to a bigger view of the text that was on the screen. And if I want, I can actually play and do text to speech. So if I'm a student who has difficulties reading or need that little bit of help to actually uh, put words in audio format, I can just hit play right here and it will actually read through the words that are on the screen. I can change the speed of it. I can change it to male or female. And even if I just wanna read it and get more focus, I can go to reading preferences and do a line focus here as we're moving along. And if I hit play, I can go up one line at a time. And if I wanna exit that, I'm gonna hit that back arrow there. All right, so the screen locked. We have our responses, so let's see how we did as a class. If I wanna unlock screens, I definitely could. So let's go to show responses here. Okay, we've got a couple of students who may not have gotten this one perfectly correct. Now, on the fly, I'm like, oh, okay. Um, we did pretty good as a class, but sometimes multiple choice isn't the best way to explain that you know something. What I'm gonna do, if I'm on the fly and wanna create a new question on the fly, if I go down here to new prompt, I'm gonna hold that down. It gives me a whole showcase of new slides, interactive slides I could do. And one of these that we haven't seen before is the text response. So I could pull this up on the screen. And so now as a student, it's not a multiple choice anymore, but I as a teacher could provide a new prompt. I could say, for example, can you explain why you answered the way you did? So you may have answered a multiple choice question, but why is what you chose the correct answer? This would be a good time for students to actually share their thinking behind something. So another way basically you can pull out and ask a question. So if I wanted to, this is a really great example that we have here from Carolyn on the teacher dashboard I'm looking at. So if I wanted to star her response and share it with the class, so again, I did a new prompt. If I wanna share that response and really share her voice with the rest of the class, rather than having her raise her hand and have to explain it if she's a little bit shy, this will give me a chance to showcase all of the great thinking that's going on in the classroom. I could start multiple ones and have them all on the screen there. Or if I want, I could just scroll through all the responses and discuss it as a class. So one of the things we're talking about when we talk about Pear Deck, it's a chance for us to really share a conversation or start a conversation rather than simply a presentation. Okay, so that is text response. That's another form of interaction. The last form of interaction is creating a website slide. What that means is from a teacher perspective, I'm showing this slide and this happens to be a link to FET uh, simulations out of the University of Boulder, Colorado. But this is the classroom view. A student view though, they actually see a split screen. Yes, they have their slide here, but this is an embedded website. This is actually a simulation students could play with in real time. 
So this is an HTML5 simulation that works perfectly inside of Pear Deck. You could not just have to do a simulation. You could do a website, an article you want students to read. It could actually be a, since we're talking Google Slides, it could be a Google Doc. It could be a Google Slide that you want students to collaborate on. And they could all work on it in here. It could be a Flickrid response. So if you want to give students a quick way to collaborate or access an external website, you can use a website slide. So the different slides we've talked about. We've talked about drawing. We've talked about number. We've talked about text. We've talked about website slide here. We've done a draggable. And six, we've done multiple choice. So that is kind of what Pear Deck is. Let's talk about how you can actually build these sessions within Google Slides. So if you're in the slideshow, we're on slide five right now. So how do you add these Pear Deck interactions? So you're going to want to get the add-on for Google Slides. When you go to add-ons in a Google Slideshow, and you go to get add-ons, you just search for Pear Deck. And actually, it was one of the first four add-ons that ever came out for Google Slides. So chances are you're going to find it really, really easily and quickly. Once you've added it, you can go to the add-ons and just open it up. And that'll open up something called the Pear Deck sidebar. So let me just quickly show you that. I'll open the slideshow that we have right now. If I go to add-ons right here, if I go to my Pear Deck for Google Slides add-on and open the Pear Deck add-on, this is where all the magic's gonna happen. Once you have a, a Google Slideshow open, just go to the add-ons and then you can go here in the sidebar and access all the features you need to. And let's talk about these kind of one at a time. When you are ready to start a lesson, so you actually have to build it first. When you're ever ready to start a lesson, that's when you would click start a lesson. But this template library is where you're going to find a whole bunch of pre-made slides for you to drop into any presentation at all and use right away. And they are fully editable. So if I go to the template library, I have template slides break, broken down based on where they occur during a lesson. Type of learning. So we have ones that are specifically designed for critical thinking skills, ones for social emotional learning, which we have some sessions on during Pear Fair, and a couple of them that are subject specific. But let me just show you how we would go about this. So let's say you want to start out your lesson with a question. So it says bell ringers and do now. So if I click on there, these are a series of different slides that I can just drop in. So let's say you have a slideshow that you presented last year and you want to get started with Pear Deck and you don't want to have to start from scratch. You can drop these right into your presentation, your slideshow, and launch them. And they'll be fully interactive. Now, this one right here, what did you learn from your homework? Let's say that's a good one to start out with as a bell ringer. I just clicked on that, and this is going to drop right into my slide deck. You'll see it popped up right here. Now, the nice thing about this is that this is fully editable. I can change what this says. And right below it, you can see it says text slide right here. That lets me know what type of interaction students are going to have with this. So what did you learn from the homework. So instead of saying homework, why don't I say from the reading last night or the video last night? So you can fully edit these to meet your needs. So we have drawing slides here. We have text slides. So if I just wanted a drawing slide and wasn't 100% sure I want to use everything it says there, I could drop that in and change it up at my own, um, own will. So I'm going to delete that slide. So again, let's say you just wanted to have some active learning, maybe every five or six slides in your presentation. Think about during a lesson. These are the type of things you could think about during a lesson. Let's say you just wanted, okay, we were about 10 slides in, and we just covered a lot of content here. And I want students to reflect and think about what they just learned. Summarize what you just learned, or summarize what we, summarize 
And you can basically change this with whatever you're talking about. Topic we just discussed. And the great thing is this is a text response. So students could be typing in and then we could share their thinking with the whole class. And that's really powerful. You don't have to start the slideshow from scratch. You can actually just take these and drop these in. These are pre-made templates for you. And again, where these are found, these are in the sidebar. And let me just open up my sidebar again. And again, the way you open it up, once you have the add-on, head over to the add-ons and add the add-on right there. So again, like I said, these are, if we go to the template library, these are not just for specifically times during a, um, during a lesson, they actually have subject specific ones. One of the ones that I love for math, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit here to this drawing slide, is solve your problem here, where you have students show their work for a problem. It's not just that multiple choice slide where they choose the correct answer, just that number slide where they put in a number, they show their thinking, because this is a drawing slide. They can actually work through the whole process. And essentially, that is a great way to share and highlight students' thinking. And there may be multiple ways to solve a problem. So when you're in the presentation, you could star multiple, multiple possible correct solutions. So again, the template library is really fantastic. Now, let's say you already have some slides with some good questions on them. What you can do is transform any slide into an interactive slide. Let's say it's this one right here that I wanna change. I can make this a text response question by clicking over here on the sidebar. I can make it a multiple choice question here, a number, website, draw, or draggable. The website slide, let's say I had a further resource that I wanted to share with you about this. If I click on website slide, what it's gonna ask me to do is to drop in a web link here, and then it would actually show up there. So that's a really simple way. Even if you wanna drop in a video for students to view, it's a great way to provide extra resources while they're going through a lesson. All right, now I'm gonna jump forward in the slides and talk about one of the newer features. So I'm gonna to have to go forward a little bit. We talked about these, but again, remember, you can fully edit any of these slides in the templates. The one thing though is, this is the one thing, do not delete that little bar at the bottom. So if that's in there, that needs to be in there because that's a control that needs to be in there. But I'm gonna show you one little, just cause I'm here, I do wanna show you one little thing. Let's say I made this a website slide and I'm just gonna put paredbeck.com. So while this is loading, you'll see a preview of what would go in there. If I update that, again, in your templates, you can fully edit these, but if you don't like that down there, one thing you can do, again, don't delete it. What I would recommend you do, I'm just gonna hit the down arrow, and now it's no longer on the canvas, but it's in the gray area, and you'll still have full functionality. So if you don't like that um, little footer there, just drag it off the display area. Okay, just a little pro tip that I love using. Now, we talked about adding those. Now, the, one of the newest features that came out, the feedback is one of the newer features in Pear Deck. Adding audio to slide is a really cool one. So in Google Slides, you do have the ability to insert audio, but that audio has to be from your Google Drive, and it actually doesn't work in Pear Deck right now. There's an even better way to do it, because you don't have to find your own audio recorder online and pay for it or use it or work with their weird interactions. If I hit Add Audio, it's gonna bring up a new window where I can actually record live audio right here and have it show up in my deck. So there's that one slide that I have. Let me go back to that one. It was the one with the graph here where it says audio included, where an individual student could access that audio and hear it. So if it is an uh, asynchronous lesson where you wanna provide some audio instructions, that's something that's super duper easy to do. You just hit add audio to slide. 
you start recording and or you can upload your own audio file. So if it's a recording that you've already made up to 10 megabytes on MP4 file, you can just upload that. And honestly, it's a really simple and easy to use recording tool. You can pause while you're recording, you can restart. I think it's one of the great features that we have in Pear Deck if you are involved in remote learning or more importantly, accessibility for all students. Now, how do you actually start presenting a Pear Deck lesson? So when you start your presentation, when you open up the sidebar and you hit start a lesson, you have two different options. What we're doing right now, or what I did right now, was a synchronous lesson. So you'll see that all of my students are actually seeing the exact same slide that I'm presenting from the classroom view. But right now, a lot of us may be in a case where we want to present asynchronously, where we want students to work at their own pace, where I'm not tying them to the pace that they work at. So that is going to be a student-paced activity. But let me just talk again about the instructor pace or synchronous pace. Now, when you hit start presenting or start the lesson, something will come up on your classroom view. It'll show an address for students to go to and where to log in. But a couple of different things you can do here. You can give students a link. You can also push this to Google Classroom if you have Google Classroom. And Pear Deck's working on a whole bunch of different interactions, or I should say external apps with different LMSs like Schoology and Canvas. And if you have either of those, that's definitely something to consider because again, it can be pushed to Google Classroom, it also could be pushed to Canvas, Schoology, and also um, Microsoft, I believe too, Microsoft Teams, but Microsoft's a different session. You're just Google people here. So I went through some of the controls down here and in your slides, it'll go through them with you. We looked at the different response views, so I won't spend too much time on them. We talked about how you can lock your screen or set a timer. So again, if I hold this lock screen down, I can hold it on the classroom view. So let's say I have this computer tied up to a, um, a projector screen. I could do it there, or if I'm showing this in a live session, or from the teacher dashboard, this is the teacher dashboard here, I can hold down that lock button and control it there. Also in the teacher dashboard, realize I have the forward and backward controls, so it really works like a great remote control. All right, so that was additional controls. Teacher dashboard we went over, and again, remember, down at the bottom here, if I go to my teacher dashboard, I can see who still has not responded. We've got a bunch of people who need to get responding to this question. I may need to talk to them in person, but that is okay. Now, when you're doing synchronous instruction, one of the hardest things to do is to decide if we're doing it virtually, how to set up your desktop. What I would recommend to do, depending on your resources, if you just have one monitor and no external monitor or other devices, setting up your classroom view on one half of the screen and then your teacher dashboard on the other will give you a lot of functionality. You can see what you're sharing with students and then you can see in the back end how students are doing. So remember, share the classroom view Never share the teacher dashboard because that has student names. And the last thing you want to do is break trust with your learners. Now, if you have an external device or a second monitor, what would be really the ultimate would be to have the classroom view on your desktop where you're sharing. And then maybe have the presentation software where you could actually see student faces or see a live chat or see what they're doing in real time, make that personal connection and have the teacher dashboard on a separate device. That kind of ensures that you're never actually going to share it, but it also gives you another level of control where you're kind of watching up here, but on a dashboard, you are really controlling everything. So, oh, sorry. So for students though, and this is gonna be really important to communicate to students is how they should set up their screens. So they're gonna to wanna to be able to see the classroom view. If they're sitting in a class, you want them to see the projector. They'd be looking at what's on the projector, but then they want their interactive screen as big as possible so they can see everything they need to see and interact. So while you may be showing what would be on the front of the board or front of the projector in the front of the classroom, this is where they'd be interacting. And really that's one of the big keys 
for doing a synchronous virtual learning experience in Pear Deck is really having everyone set up the right way, which is what you know a lot of us are dealing with right now as we start heading back to school. So one of the first slides you should probably give your students, but one of the first things you do with your students if they're doing it, if you're doing a virtual live session, is really share this with them. What's the most efficient way to set up your screens? Now, if we're in a session and we want to close it, you can always end the session by hitting these more actions down here or just hitting the end button. But there is one other thing we can do. I want to show you what asynchronous learning would look like. If I hit the little snowman here or the three dots down here, I can put it on student pace right now. I'm going to put it on student pace and then we'll come back to that in just a moment because I do want to talk a little bit about asynchronous presentation. When you present asynchronously, remember that what you are doing is when I hit start lesson, it's still giving you those two options. This is if we're doing it synchronously, instructor paced. If I'm doing it asynchronously, that is a student paced activity. We are starting student paced and they're going to be working on it student paced. When I click start student paced, this may take a moment. What it'll do, it's going to give me some information to pass on to my students. It's going to give me a link that I can copy and share out with them. I could post it on an email. I could put it on an LMS. Anywhere I want students to actually access, I could put it out there. All right. So in asynchronous learning, what the student is going to see when they are in student pace, the student is going to see a couple of new features down here. They can move forwards and backwards through any slide that they want. And you can see I still have my feedback down here from before, but they have the ability to answer these questions or move through these slides on their own. From the teacher end, what I can see, I can actually see here where my students are at. These little faces here are students and where they are at. So if I look at the dashboard, I can see specifically who is where in this slide deck. All right, so if I saw that a lot of students are here, I may wanna give them a little bit of a heads up. So that again is for asynchronous instruction. Now, we talked a little bit about the feedback. I went through that. Couple of things when we're getting to asynchronous instruction, some best practices. It's a good idea if students are gonna be left on their own to include an expectation slide. So what is the goal of learning as an introduction? You could also record a video or record audio for them. How is our students supposed to be doing this? And really why are we doing this at the very start? Since this is an asynchronous lesson, you have the opportunity to close it whenever you want, but it's important that students know when you are actually gonna end it. So that's really important too. Another thing, multiple modes of information. This um, immersive reader is a great tool, but always provide visuals as well. And again, always have a way for students to contact you. When you are ready to end a lesson, Students will get something called a takeaway once you close out this session. And that's a Google Doc that's shared with them that will have all the slides and their individual responses. So that's a really powerful tool as well. There's some information, more information about takeaways in this slide deck. So please be sure to read it. If you'd like, there's um, the different tiers of Pear Deck as well. Bunch of resources from PearDeck.com. They have great videos and explainers, so be sure to do that. All right. And there's also the Getting Started with Pear Deck guide that's available, and I was one of the co-authors. It's a really great resource. It's probably going to be updated soon. We'll see about that. But again, this PearDeck.com going to their um, knowledge base is going to be really, really important. Okay. So remember, if you want to access these slides, you're going to want to go to the Bitly. Pair Fair 101, but I did want to open it up for some questions if people had any questions. But again, the bit.ly is where you're going to find the link to this. And somewhere in there, there's also, if you wanted to try out these slides, there's some self-paced ones as well. All right. now, I know that's a lot of information, but I would love 
to answer any questions that you actually have. Oh, and actually, let me go to my contact information too. I'll put that, leave that up there. Do you have any questions at all? Okay. So someone asks, how do you access the teacher dashboard? Okay, good question. So I'm in this, let me go to this session right now. If I'm in a session and want to access the teacher dashboard, I can hit the snowman right here and open the teacher dashboard in a new window. But a great way, the way I did it today, let's say I started a session. If I go to app.pairdeck.com, let's say I start an asynchronous lesson on Friday for my students on Monday, and I wanna check the end of the day Monday. I'm gonna to go to the sessions tab here. This will have all my sessions that I have started. And if I wanna see how they did, I can just click on this button here. This is gonna be the teacher dashboard, and this will bring it up for any of the sessions that I actually have open. And that's a really great and powerful tool to be able to start something and then come back to it later. So accessing the teacher dashboard, you can either do it in the session itself. And one, th one thing that's really interesting is sometimes when you start a session and you go to a new device and go to paradeck.com, It'll actually, I should say app.paredeck.com. It'll actually tell you that you've started a presentation. Do you want to open up the projector view? It's smart like that because you're logging in with Google. All right. And again, going to this session tab helps you see so many different ones. All right. Can you start synchronously and then move to asynchronous in the same deck, Pear Deck partway through? Yes, you definitely can. And that's one of the things that I love to do. So let me go to my dashboard view. I have this on student pace, so I'm going to stop it. Let's say we were moving through. I was moving through a bunch of content. And what I, sometimes I like to do is at the end of a set of notes is basically have like five or six questions I want students to work through. So if I am presenting synchronously and want to jump to student pace or from instructor pace to student pace, I'm just going to hit on the snowman down here, the three dots and turn it on student paste and that will turn it to asynchronous so okay got it we're moving from instructor paste to student paste so that is a quick way to do it and you can always stop it now one thing that's also interesting if i want to end this session we are in student paste let's say i want to hit end it's going to say oh your current your session's currently in student paste i sure want to end this session if you just want to close out this window, I could just close out this window and it would not affect my students. But if I actually want to end end and stop everyone from being able to participate, I'd hit yes, I'm sure. But if I just want to leave and allow students to keep working, I could click this. Let's say I'm 100% sure I want to end this session. This is where I could actually create the student takeaways. So I could just type in there and let's call it Pear Deck 101. And then I would save and end the session. It's sending those Google Docs to student emails. So they will get that email to them. And it'll be a document that's shared with them. And they can basically, they'll have edit rights to it. They can write a little bit more. You can make it an extra assignment if you want for them to review their thinking. All right. So then when you return home, it'll take you back to the Pear Deck home. Again, if you're looking for any help at all on anything, that knowledge base is fantastic. It's the number one place to go. All right, any other questions? Let's see. So someone asked, can students add audio on interactive slides? They cannot add audio. So the five different interactions that we have right now, let me bring them up again, go to the slide with them. Sorry, lots of slides here. Just so I can. So the five different interactions that were uh, six different interactions. You can add these to any of your slides, any type of Google slide. Now, when it says the drawing and draggable are premium, that just means you can you can't change any of your existing slides into premium. But 
If you go to the template library, remember, they have a whole bunch of different templates that you can edit at will. So the five, six different types of interactions, I should say, text response, multiple choice, number response, website slides. So again, you can embed any type of website you want in there from video to reading to simulations, drawing, and then also draggable responses. All right, let's see what else. Let me scroll through, all right. I teach math, can I create my own draggable icon? So for draggable icons, sadly, you cannot create your own, but they do have a whole bunch of different um, ones that are there. Let me just, sh um, if you, when you create a draggable slide, they'll have some addition, subtraction, some numbers, as well as some different math functions. Can you use Pear Deck in Canvas? So Pear Deck just released an integration with Canvas in which you can actually create an assignment as a Pear Deck, as an external tool. And students, you can monitor the progress and it'll actually when they complete the deck, it'll show up in the gradebook as completed. All right, let me put, so, oh, someone already put the link into the guide. Let me go to the last slide one more time, just so you can definitely get in touch with me. I'm more than happy to. Yes, so once, so someone asked, will takeaways only be published once everyone is finished or the, session is fully ended yes so once the session is over and closed only then will it actually publish it all right okay so um again i have my contact information up there please reach out to me with any questions um twitter is a really easy way to get in touch with me um this is my school email if you again want to get this slideshow please go to bit.ly pair fair 101 but other than that, I want to thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate you spending the time. My students love Pear Deck. I love Pear Deck. It's the number one tool that really helps their learning. Hope you continue to do more learning at Pear Fair today. And thank you so much for spending this time with me on a Monday morning. So have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful rest of your summer. And good luck in the coming school year. Thank you.